Well, you know, we when we brought Jürgen last year uh, uh, around sort of October time, um, you know, we it was it was always going to be tough. You know, when you change managers during the season, it's always going to be tough. And um, but I think on balance, you know, I think we felt we had a a, a good performance overall because you know to come from where we got to get to um, the finals, semi-finals, those types of things, it, you know, is important and. Um, you know, Jurgen always said, and we always said that we would, you know, use this summer to consolidate a little more. Um, I think I feel we've made some good transfers. I know Jurgen's happy with the work we've done together, and um, you know, we're in good shape. I think, you know, if our squads fit, if our players are available, um, I think we'll take on anyone. And we've got a tough start. You know, with three away games, and um, you know, Arsenal on Sunday. Um, but you know it's a long season, and I think we'll have to judge it a little further down. But the expectations are those that you would expect for Liverpool, which is you know try and get in the top four and qualify back for Champions League, um, and to get the best we can out of the squad we've assembled. But you know we have a we have a great group, we have a great manager, and great coaching staff, and a great team throughout the club. So for fans here in Northern Ireland, just like everyone, I think we can be optimistic about this season. Yeah, first and foremost, it has to be about the football. But I think, like anything, you know, when we, when you assemble teams of people, whether it's footballers, businesses, you know, other, you have to have people that fit with you, you know, on a personal level. And and um, the great thing about Jurgen is a very honest and genuine guy. And I think Liverpool fans throughout the world, you know, kind of get that. It's a special club with a special type of feeling about it. And and you just feel like he fits that, you know, the, even taking the football side, he's got the right personality for our club. And I think that's why um, you can tell Liverpool fans have, have warmed to him very quickly and feel like he's, he's settled in well and, you know, he gets their support and, um, you know, and he gives 100%. And he's a, as I say, he's a great guy to work with, very honest, very genuine. You know where you are with Jürgen, um, good or bad, he'll tell you. So, that, and that's the right way to be. Um, I don't think so. I mean, we, we, we've done most of the work we expected to do. Um, it always depends on who becomes available or opportunities that present themselves. Um, but, you know, you, football's a strange old game and in the last, last couple of weeks of the transfer window, anything is possible. Um, but um, at this stage, we're, we're really focusing, or Jürgen in particular is obviously just focusing on taking that group he's got now and putting the best team we can out on Sunday and then the following weeks. Yeah, Brendan's a great man. I enjoyed very much working with him. As, you know, uh, sent him a couple of messages when he got the job at Celtic, which I think is a great opportunity for him, and I'm sure he'll do well there. Um, I remember him telling me how proud he was when he came. He got an honorary degree here at the university, and I remember when he came and saying how proud he was. And you know, he always talked uh, very warmly about his his you know his heritage here. And um, he's a good manager, a good young manager. Did a good job for Liverpool. You know, um, as I've said before, um, you know, whatever managers come and go at every football club, but um, you know, Brendan's a part of Liverpool's history now, and that's right and proper. He had a really good go. Um, these things work out, don't work out, but um, but I'm I'm confident he'll go on and do great things elsewhere in football. And and you know, as we've said before, we really wish him well. Yeah, I've loved my time at Liverpool. You know, this is my tenth season. At Liverpool, and I actually we made an announcement some months back that I'll finish at the end of this season, and that's um, it's probably the hardest decision certainly of my business career. Um, but I always feel like you know you I, particularly any job I've ever had, I've kind of taken a view at some point when I feel I've given the most I can give and the best I can give, and in particular when it's Liverpool, I'm from Liverpool, born in Liverpool, supported Liverpool. Um, and obviously now got the opportunity to be the chief executive of Liverpool. I think when you feel you've given as the most you can give, you should never. Liverpool should never accept second best or, or you know, not 100%. And and I, and I feel that this is the right time. You know, one more season, and then let somebody else take that mantle. And and, and of course, you know, as I said to somebody a couple of weeks ago, who said, oh, you know, you're really going to miss this when you know we were playing a game. I said. Well, you know, I'm, I'm actually not going to stop supporting Liverpool. I'm just, you know, I might be sat in the stands watching. I'll still enjoy it. But um, but it is a tough job. It demands a lot. Uh, you know, it's it's 
you know, really is seven days a week. Um, you're always switched on, you know, even on holiday. Um, so, you know, it's important to, to take some time at the end and, and gather it up. But I, I feel very proud of what we've achieved in the time I've been there. You know, I'll, I'll feel particularly proud in a couple of weeks when we open our new facilities at Anfield, which I've obviously been part of. And, you know, leaving a great team, a great manager, great owners, um, and a great team of people that, that really don't get the credit in the background. Uh, all those people who run the business, run the shops, run the, you know, the stuff that we do right across the world. They're an incredible bunch of people. And, and as I say, I'll feel very proud that, that uh, hopefully my legacy is leaving the club in a much better state than it was when I arrived. Uniquely, you know, important because it's uniquely Anfield, I think. And, you know, I've said before on the first day that um, Fenway Sports Group bought Liverpool, we were wandering around. I was wandering around with John Henry and he, you know, he said to me, why would we leave here? You know, um, if any, any Liverpool fans or Irish Liverpool fans, Northern Irish Liverpool fans get to go to Fenway Park, in Boston, you'll get a real sense of why he would say that right from the start, because Fenway feels very much like Anfield. It's got that steel and brick feel, you know, it's authentic. It's a very authentic feeling baseball stadium, just as Anfield is. And, you know, it's the, it's the spiritual home of the football club. And, you know, if you go and see what we've built there now, it's best in class. It's something that Liverpool fans can be proud of. It's something that you know, people can feel like this is a real world-class venue for football and, you know, I think we just have one over most people because it is Anfield and, you know, we speak to players, managers, others from other clubs across the world, they've all got a story about playing Anfield and it's great that we'll remain there. I do, the owners are, are fantastic people. They're very committed. It feels like every other day there's a story about somebody else buying it, which but that's that's football. And you know these guys are hugely committed to the club. They're great people to work for and with. Um, that, and and I think probably at the heart of it and what makes them so great is they really do understand what being Liverpool fan is and what being the owners and custodians of Liverpool fan brings with it. And they've you know they've taken that on board. Um, they're very respectful. Some of the stuff we did in the design of the stadium that makes it feel really Liverpool came from the owners, you know, so they, they get what's under the surface at Liverpool and what the DNA is. And for that reason and others, you know, it makes them great custodians for the club. Well, if I knew that, I'd be a, a very rich man, I guess. But um, listen, you know, we, we, as I just said, you know, this thing, for people like me and my age who've been supporting Liverpool since the sort of late 60s, you know, we know what it's like for Liverpool, or I know what it's like for Liverpool to, to be the team that won every year. Um, I think that's gone away now for everybody. I don't think it's either easy or, or maybe possible, you know, for a team to dominate completely and consistently in this league. That makes for great football though, and great viewing. What I can tell you is, you know, this manager, these players, these owners, this football club, is hugely committed to achieving that. It's been a long time since we won the league, and you know when we go to work every day this season and every season, it will be with that goal in mind. So there won't be anybody going to work hoping to do okay. Um, everybody goes there with the with the ambition of winning. I think that's definitely possible. I think you know we have this. This question comes up a lot, particularly around this time of year. You know, every year, every summer, we go and play five, six, seven games in pre-season. Some before we go off on tour, the big tour, and some after. And, you know, only a couple of years ago, obviously, we played down in Dublin and we've played, you know, all over the world. We've been to Australia this year. We've been, uh, particularly, we've been in, um, in the US and then I was in Germany last week with the team. Um, every, what basically happens is our, our commercial team and our football coaching side get together and just put a programme together. And I think if the right organisers, you know, are in touch with our, because we really don't go out looking for those games, they tend to come to us. So if the right organisers, you know, approach our team and, and put, the, you know, the right proposition for the right timing, the, the most important thing, people think it's a big financial, you know, thing. it's more about the quality of the team that you can play at a particular time. And sometimes you're looking for, a, you know, a lower level opposition in the first, two, three games of your thing, and then you build it up and build it up. And so, 
you know, there's always an opportunity and it's just about the sort of stars aligning really and for the right venue, right team, right time, but uh, never say never, that's for sure.